The Overlord is a character that is super evil because he wants to be, but it seems like Ninjago crystallizes taking a different route. Hey guys, I'm also from Ninja432, and today I will be discussing the Overlord and Ninjago crystallize. So let's just get into it. So I feel like the Overlord is a character that is evil just because he's evil. We saw it in season three. The reason he was evil is just because he's evil, you know? Super bad guy, and all he wants is Ninjago to be destroyed. The Overlord definitely seems like he's gonna be better in this season because he has villains to help him. He has characters like Harumi, Pythor, Sphera, Mr. F, Skull Sorcerer, other people like that. I like villains with a sort of advantage against the ninja. Like Garmadon, he had advantage of power because Lloyd had just lost his. Lloyd will unlock the Oni form. It's going to be a good version of him, like a good version of the Oni. And he's definitely going to be evil at the same time. And the ninja will unlock dragon powers that can surpass the overlord. And it's definitely going to be sort of an even fight. When the villains get crystallized, it's going to be more of a sort of final battle, I guess. This is going to be some sort of end to the Venture arc, I'm pretty sure. And at first, I didn't want the Overlord to return. Because he's just some guy who's lost to the ninja twice now. And he definitely doesn't need to be back. But this season seems to be going in the right direction. And let me tell you why. The Overlord in the season, he's a Venture buyer. That adds another sort of character arc to him. And he's definitely going to be a more interesting character with that. And he's going to be more, I guess, prominent. And he has a reason to this. He wants peace in the dark. It's obviously going to be a bad thing for the ninja, and they have to stop it. But I feel like they always want somebody with a sympathetic backstory. Like, oh, we need a backstory. But I, don't, I feel like... If they were to make him sympathetic, like, we need to feel sorry for him. No, that's not that's not going to happen. He's the overlord. He's the ultimate evil. He's this bad guy with four arms. And the ninja immediately have to stop him ASAP. And I just feel like characters like Harumi, Harumi did it right. But Harumi was really the only character we ever need with a sorrow backstory. And I just feel like the overlord, he doesn't fit that role. He's the ultimate evil in Ninjago. We don't need him to be the super sorrow guy. No, that's not who he is. And the second reason I think he's going to be a better character is because he has villains to aid him. And I feel like a villain team-up is a really good story. And nobody likes Day of the Departed. Day of the Departed did it wrong just because it was too rushed. We needed a season on that. And Ninjago Crystallize, it's going to be 30 episodes. And it's going to be... It's going to be action-packed. And we're going to have some sort of focus on every character. And yeah, that's really what we need. The Overlord definitely is going to be smarter because he has Harumi to aid him. Harumi's a very smart character, right? And she's definitely going to be more prominent because she's the Overlord's right-hand man. And I just feel like with that, the Overlord is definitely going to be a more interesting character, you know? And it's definitely going to be a little bit more evil, I guess, because he has all these evil characters that hate the ninja. And the ninja, they're going to have to get their friends back. And it's definitely going to be sort of like Tommy and Jason said, an endgame-inspired battle. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think he'll surpass the Overlord? And do you think he will be one of the best villains out there? I am Ultimate Ninja 432 Please make sure to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.